<clears throat> There's a lot to learn when you're a new parent, like the ins and outs of nap time. Get them to sleep faster with ad-free videos. Try YouTube Premium on us. Hey, somebody showed up. <laughs> Hi. I don't know, can you hear me? There's about a seven second delay in between everything I do. Hey, can you guys hear me? 
There's about a seven second delay, um, maybe somewhere in between five and seven seconds between what I say and what I do and what you guys hear. Turn down the creepy music, unless you want to keep it on. I can't remember if you said you didn't like that. Um, so I don't know if you guys caught the uh, other video. Uh, but I kind of go into a little bit of a description about this. Um, so yeah, the whole point of this little thing is to kind of set it up as a... Uh, Traveler's Diary of uh, creatures they've encountered on their travels, uh, you know, peddling their uh, cheese and herbs or tobaccos and teas from town to town and uh, having to cross some perilous terrain where uh, they encounter a number of bizarre creatures. Um, so the one I'm going to cover today is called a finger worm. And essentially what that is, is a kind of creepy finger-shaped worm that uh, inhabits bogs and swamps and marshes and wetlands. And there's nothing particularly uh, scary or dangerous about it, really. Um, it's easily avoidable. But if you happen to fall asleep and you're not wearing any gloves... And watch uninterrupted. This thing will creep along the uh, earth, make its way to whichever finger it can find, and uh, inject you with a sedative that takes you out for 24 to 48 hours. And while you're passed out, dreaming of something delicious, uh, this thing will envelop your entire finger. So basically, let's say your pinky or any other finger. This worm will come along and take your whole finger, latch on with its lamprey-like little hook teeth, and begin digesting your entire finger down to the bone until it uh, essentially has covered your finger. And then while it's latched onto that what's left of your nub, uh, and incidentally the teeth contain an anesthetic, You'll never know what happened to you when you wake up. If you wake up, you'll look at your hand and you might see kind of like a little cut or a ripple where that mouth is. But otherwise, by that point, the uh, finger worm now looks like your finger. Same color and it's just feeding off of you like a parasite. Uh, and it will live the rest of its life that way and pray that you never find out. So... What I was going to do is start sketching some of that. So let's start with like a, uh, a finger section of the finger worm. thing is nice and sharp so it can stick you with it but uh, it's a little bit more rigid than a nail a regular fingernail and a little thicker 
and underneath it if you're careful and you know what you're looking for you'll notice there's these kind of little almost like veins that seep into tiny grooves in the nail underneath it and what those do is they inject that uh, sleeping agent Concentric circles of super sharp, scary looking little teeth. That's how it latches on to you. Take your videos offline and watch uninterrupted. Try YouTube Premium on us. So um, the other thing I'm going to do today is make a little foam model of this thing. The other things I wanted to add too was that uh, besides this worm, one of the things this this guy who's documenting all of this discovers is there's ways around this. So what this thing is attracted to. is uh, smelly fingers since it's kind of a small ground dwelling thing of course it's gonna have a propensity for wanting to go towards stuff that's rotten and stinky so the moral of the story is your mom always told you to wash your hands and stay clean. Hygiene is the key to keeping these things away from you. The cleaner your hands are, the less likely they are to uh, latch themselves onto your loose finger. Wearing gloves helps. Um, I would imagine that uh, anything that would normally count as being uh, hygienic or normal hygienic practices would probably keep this away. The uh, elven guides that the merchants use to uh, make their way through the swamps and other places uh, just happen to have tattoos on their hands and arms and chests but what this guy noticed is a lot of these elves have these tattoos extended out to their uh, fingertips and what he discovers is uh, it's not just a ritualistic thing it has a practical use this ink they use comes from a 
certain kind of berry that uh, this worm doesn't like. So when these elves go to sleep at night, they don't really concern themselves with getting attacked by this finger creature because the uh, ink in the tattoo on their skin uh, repels it. So yeah, there's that. The other thing is, uh, you know, some medieval people, um, and even people today, aren't terribly hygienic when they uh, <clears throat> excuse themselves uh, and uh, tend to use their bare hands. So anybody who does that is almost a uh, guaranteed uh, victim to have their finger eaten away. Besides getting your finger eaten, Hi. it's really not all that uh, song, hours and hours. frightening a creature. And in fact, uh, there are some uh, nefarious types that intentionally allow the finger to be eaten by this worm um, because of this right here. So because this thing injects a powerful sedative, uh, someone like an assassin or a person who travels a lot or a bodyguard or anybody at all that would like to have the use of a finger that they can just poke somebody with and knock them out for 24 to 48 hours. That's a pretty useful tool. Um, and since, you know, you're not going to die from this thing. Sure, I'll take my finger and I'll, I'll let it eat, eat it down to the bone. And I mean, you still have the use of the finger. It's just a worm now. The other thing is it doesn't, it doesn't come off ever until you die. Now what happens when you die is this thing desiccates and shrivels up because it's no longer got a food source, but as it does so, it injects all its spawn, its little eggs and larva, into your corpse where they feed until they grow into a full-size worm and then they go off into the world on their own. So you could call it a dead man's finger too, I suppose, but uh, yeah. So that's, that's the whole idea behind this thing. The uh, elves, I was going to go ahead and draw one of those. Now, I kind of uh, did a practice run the other night to see if I could get the video down. And this is kind of what I came up with. So this is kind of the tattoos they have on their fingers um, and on their faces and whatnot. And then this was my original finger worm. I was riding backwards because I couldn't figure out how to make the, the uh, I couldn't figure out how to make the video camera turn around. I was using a live webcam. Um, still haven't figured that out, so I'm hoping uh, you guys are seeing this the way it's meant to be seen. Let me go ahead and I'll come back to the drawing pad. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that little foam piece I made last night. <clears throat> so, this is the finger I made last night, if you saw a picture of it on uh, Instagram. There we go. All 
All right, so the way I made this thing, I just kind of matched it up to my finger and thought, well, what would this finger look like if it were just some ugly desiccated worm? Uh, took a piece of EVA foam, just like this, a little thinner, and uh, I mean, just literally a little stick of foam. Took a glob of the foam clay. Uh, helps if you wet this surface first so that this has something to adhere to. Actually, moisture, um, usually just water works, um, helps the, the foam clay adhere to the EVA foam. So once you've got it on there, it'll, it'll typically just, it'll stick to this pretty good. And then you can kind of smear it around. And water will also allow you to kind of smooth out edges and other things uh, and add uh, you know fill in gaps and things like that so if you've got two pieces of foam for instance that are gapped like this you can get some foam clay and smear it in there and smooth it over and it's like there was nothing there and when it dries it dries like a foam so these actually haven't even fully cured it you can kind of tell that this thing was trying to adhere to it but, uh, so that means this has still got a little bit of, let's see if I can get this little, some moisture on this thing. Get rid of this little thing here. The focus, autofocus on this isn't tremendously good. There we go. So you'll note it's got, it kind of picked up this texture. It's going to sm smear some spittle on it. <laughs> see if that helps smooth it out. Not really. This has gotten dry enough to where it's probably okay. So, this is just a little piece of foam. And this thing has all kinds of autofocus issues, doesn't it? Let's get this out of the way. So, this is just a regular little piece of foam. What I imagine the baby version of this would probably look like. Nothing particularly interesting, just a kind of a weird gray worm. Um, I also took this and I added some texture to it. And here's the problem with the foam clay. Um, you can still see there's a little bit of texture. Now, I took a picture of this before this dried. And there is a considerably deeper set of lines on this than there is on this one presently. And it's probably really difficult to make out because of the lighting in here. But let me see if I can... get the light to work a little better. Not too harsh. Let me see if I can get the light in here. Look a little nicer. So you can roll it pretty thin. Don't miss a beat. It doesn't break. I discover new music every Friday. It keeps YouTube music its flexibility pretty well, but it also keeps its Bringing form pretty well. Bringing you the latest well. hits and music videos from uh, today's hottest artists. Now, the thing about that is, is as this continues to dry, um, and it could happen in a week or a few days, this will start to lose some of that malleability. And what you'll need to do is coat it with something like uh, flex seal not flex seal but they make something like cost flex there's all kinds of uh, sealants you can use that put a, a nice coat on this and what it does is actually keeps it from drying out so it keeps some of that that malleability and you, you can see it almost has a little bit of a, a pull tension you know you can kind of pull on it without tearing it if I cut this open and I show you a cross section, it's going to look remarkably like this EVA foam. So let's, let's cut a little piece of this off.
performing an alien autopsy. Alright, this isn't the sharpest blade right now. It's kind of dulled out, but... Let's see if we can find put that cross-section. There you go. So this has still got a little bit of gooiness to it on the inside. It hasn't completely dried out. You see that? Can squeeze out some stuff to play with. Look at that. So the outside of this was still was touch dry, but the inside was still uh, squishy. So that means I can actually squeeze that stuff out of this we'll call it like a sausage casing and. Uh, Almost sculpt with it. So, this probably needed about another uh, couple of days, maybe even at this thickness, maybe a full full day more to completely dry out. So keep that in mind if you're using this stuff. Uh, if you're going to be cutting into it, you want to give it at least 48 hours. I just made this finger and these little pieces last night, um, I would say probably, if I had to guess, nine hours ago. So this is just nine hours worth of drying time. This is fully dry. This uh, dry to within, I'd say about one or two millimeters of thickness, and then the rest of it's still blue inside. Almost see where it's dry and then also still wet. And this little cross section. There we go. There's an air bubble in there. See that? But it's it's still gooey, but it's it's not gooey enough to really shape anything with. Uh, this also, you can cut this once it's pretty dry. Let's YouTube see if I can get a premium sharper blade out of this. To you. During your dinner party with friends and family, on long drives Let's without see, a Seiko, and when your phone screen's locked. It's full of exciting features that make you feel like you're with the band, that help you find the music you've been looking for, and discover new music that you'll be listening to for years to come. Upgrade to YouTube Music Premium. So, Uninterrupted music this cuts dedicated to you. Really, really Try well. Free. Uh, you can cut it into straight shapes. If you want to make a part. Out of foam. I don't think you'd have any issue making nice angular cuts in it. I think the issue is with the, the how much it, or how well it holds this detail. So you can kind of barely see those little striations here. Now let me show you what those actually looked like last night. Keep in mind, this is roughly nine hours of dry time. So, the bottom line is, if I if I put a heavy amount of detail in this, um, it's not going to stay. It, it's this. I mean, actually, you can probably tell from this picture here. So, uh, let me see here. So what you can see is there are much deeper lines in the original um, than in this. And let me let me point the camera over there.
here, look at this line right here. Now look at it on this. Same angle. Where is it? So the problem with this thing is, um, there's a, you can almost make it out right on this edge. I'm sorry, here we go. So yeah, the, the lines for the all practical purposes is just completely gone. quite as deep um, so you can really gouge into this stuff but the problem with the foam and detail lines um, or any kind of I mean I had pock marks all over this at one point um, is the foam as it dries it swells up and any kind of pressed uh, line you pushed in detail into will just disappear um, there is a way around that though and that way is when you've got a wet piece like this, you can roll this out into a really, 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 really nice little thin thread and just go back and rework that detail back into it. Uh, that's not going to work with this one because it's still, it's already pretty wet. I mean, uh, dry already. There's not much you can do with this uh, anymore other than, you know, chop it up in little pieces. Surgical clamps like yours, yeah, hemostats. They're called hemostats. Um, oh, Andy made it. Oh, that's all right, uh, Sram. Uh, I was just going over some of the uh, foam clay properties and this uh, finger I sculpted last night. Um, sorry, I missed you guys uh, coming in. So what I was just saying is that there was a lot more detail on this thing when I sculpted it, but as this uh, foam clay dried out, Hi, uh, it swelled up Check and absorbed a lot of that detail. YouTube. You can almost see these, some of these lines in here and wrinkles almost completely disappeared where they were a lot deeper on the original. Uh, even some of the uh, little scratches on this. Now I made this in about, <laughs> I mean, it, it must have been like five or ten minutes. It, it didn't take any time at all super easy um, what I would probably do to make this look nicer is sculpt out the general form of the finger let it dry overnight and also for those of you that missed it that black part is the bone I made that with uh, just this plain EVA foam just to cut a little piece I literally just cut a scrap and wrapped it with a ball of, uh, of this stuff um, I don't know how much you guys missed so you can you can stop me if you've heard this before um, but yeah there's a piece of EVA foam in here but despite that you notice it stays really flexible and it goes back to its kind of shape pretty well too so this would be fun stuff if you wanted to make like a, a little armature with some wires and make a little gross finger that rolled around. That, that was the whole point behind the worm is it just crawls around, finds a finger, eats the finger. Now you've got no finger. Boom! There's your new finger. And then when you wake up in the morning, it looks like this. So if you missed the sketching part, he missed <laughs> Yeah, he learned a new word. Um, there's other types too. This was the uh, sketch I did earlier in the video. Uh, we were going a lot when I first went live. I was waiting for people to come in. And uh, I think Thombie was the first person in here. Um, Chimera was in here a little while, but I think he just came in to say hi. So what you see here,
when I was pointing out, let's see. Getting ready for your first day at a new job? Time for some pump up music. YouTube Music is your personal guide to the world of music with personalized playlists so you can conquer the workday. Upgrade to YouTube Music Premium, uninterrupted music dedicated to you. Try one month free. What's up, world? It's your girl, Money Long. Make sure you check out my new single, Hours and Hours, along with the rest of what's hot on YouTube Music's The Hit List Playlist. The playlist bringing you today is hot as it.
Discover fresh new tracks and new music videos every Friday on YouTube Music's release playlist. Looking for new songs? YouTube Music is your personal guide to the world of music. Built to help you find exactly what you're looking for. Sign up for YouTube Music. Uh, let's see. Premium for one month free. Anyone doing anything while watching? I'm drawing. Uh, making a pot of coffee. Got my coffee here. Uh, fun to sculpt with anything. Clay or Sculpey. Yeah. Um, what I was saying earlier is, uh, yeah, this, this thing has rows and rows of round uh, teeth. And as it envelops your finger, it uh, eats away the flesh, leaving only the bone. And it latches on to what's left of the nub with those, finger, those little uh, teeth. And as it latches on, it starts to suck your blood and take the color and more or less form of your finger. They already are kind of evolved to look like this. Well, I say evolved, but the idea behind them is uh, in the story of the Traveler, he's saying, you know, the lore is uh, no one knows where these things really came from, only that uh, they suddenly appeared uh, over a hundred years ago and uh, it's suspected they were 
created as a prank by some uh, uh, would-be uh, mage who wanted to make his name famous but uh, just wasn't all that talented and his his last laugh on everyone was uh, making uh, these seemingly harmless worms that eat your finger uh, and uh, causing them to spawn all over the bogs of that region so uh, kind of like a, like an F you to the uh, villagers for uh, never taking him seriously uh, so now anyone that goes through there uh, you know has to worry about being assailed by one of these things uh, with the idea uh, like I mentioned earlier that once they've latched on they stay on there until they're dead uh, you can have them removed but you end up with like something that looks like this you know a missing finger but if you decide to keep it um, it'll act just like your finger you still have your bone in there it takes over the tissue uh, you can feel things with it um, and some people do it intentionally uh, usually people of nefarious character uh, just so they can have this nail that can poke somebody and knock them out for two days at a time so yeah fun so you fall asleep um, you're not very keen on hygiene you have dirty hands uh, the worms are attracted to that they come crawling to your finger at night they I don't know how gory I should get with this but you guys tell me you, you up for some gore <laughs> um, effectively what happens is let's uh, let's do a little a little uh, transparent free and watch thing here try YouTube premium on us this might look kind of weird. Uh, the teeth eat the finger. Say this is your finger. Here's your other finger.
keep the vibe going with YouTube Music Premium with ad-free music that can play with the screen locked and be saved offline so you can enjoy your playlists anywhere. Upgrade to YouTube Music Premium. Uninterrupted music dedicated to you. Try one month free. You guys want to hear some music? Sleepy Man, Worms come to eat Sleepy Man's finger, Worm eats Sleepy Man's finger, Worm becomes Sleepy Man's finger. I think that tells the story pretty effectively. Uh, so let's get, let's take a break from the drawing real quick. And we can get back to this uh, other stuff. If you're interested in one of these things, I can put the link in the uh, description later. Um, it's, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I thought this was kind of cool. Um, like I said, it's it's not well made. It's not like super fancy. Um, this, this is just the, like cheap thread um, and vinyl or cheap some paper leather, probably made out of scrap leather. Um, but it was 14 bucks and it has a lot of pages and it looks cool. So. So this is the brand of foam clay I've been buying. I'm not a foam clay expert. Um, I just needed some for a project a while back. I went online and I just grabbed literally the first one I saw I liked um, that had good reviews. Um, so far this one's been pretty good to me. Uh, comes in this nice little Tupperware type container with a handle on it, you know. Sorry. All right, there we go. Um, now I, I went ahead and added a Ziploc bag just because. Uh, you hear music? about now you hear that really oh yeah I guess I was playing white bat in the background um, were you guys able to hear me while I was talking that whole time, or were you just hearing the music? Yeah, that's the direction I'm going with the book, Zombie. It's uh, all going to be uh, a compendium of uh, creatures. So this is what the uh, intro was. So it was a traveling merchant's guide and beast compendium of the lands of Konigsberg, Lanymiat, Jurkestal, and Ulstermeyer, Ulstermshire, and then a little character 
named uh, Vassian von Ziff, uh, your humble servant. And then right after he says he's your humble servant, he goes on to brag about all the cool stuff he sells. This is basically a book slash business card. So he's like, hey, I made this book you'll probably find super useful. While you're at it, here's all the stuff I sell. Buy it. <laughs> buy the book. Buy my stuff. Um, so yeah, he's the kind of guy that's uh, sort of wily, experienced, he's been on the road selling his, his stuff for a while. He doesn't make any of this, it's just, you know, he's a trader. So uh, he sells tea, herbs, tobacco, different types of liquors, uh, salted meats, cheeses, I mean anything you can think of they would probably find, you know, uh, a good sell back in the fantasy middle ages, I guess. Uh, chocolates. Uh, he's a friend of the cheesemongers and the chocolatiers. So, yeah, that's his. That's his uh, jam. That's his his uh, little his little thing. So once he's uh, done all of that, he's like, oh, by the way, here's all my stuff I sell. This is my business card. Here's how I can help you. And then he just jumps right into like, you know, let's start with the tale of the blah blah blah. And so we're going to do the finger worm today. Tomorrow it might be, uh, you know, like I was uh, describing in one of the chats the other day, we might do magic nose goblins, which aren't goblins at all. They're, they're tiny, uh, slimy creatures that uh, dig out the, uh, the uh, dried uh, refuse from one's nostrils and deposits in its stead uh, a mineral uh, very similar, if not exactly, like gold. So yeah, if you, uh, that's the, the, the basically the moral of the story on that one will be, and, and there's always going to be some kind of tie-in. It's like, so your mom always says, never stick, never pick your nose, and you don't want to pick your nose, because if you do, the magic nose goblins will have nothing to eat, and they won't leave you with a little chunk of gold in your nose. So yeah, um, what those will do is, while you're sleeping, a lot of this stuff happens while you're sleeping, of course, because no live person would let an animal or creature willingly eat their finger or dig into their nose, right? I'm hoping. Um, well, the exception of this thing, because like I said, if you're, a, if you're somebody who just wants to have a finger they can knock people out with with a stick, uh, yeah, a little prick on the neck with your fingernail and they go to sleep, yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty scary. Um, but, yeah, I doubt anyone's going to be wanting to collect a nose goblin. Or, I don't know, maybe you, you run an orphan house and uh, you collect all the gold from the orphans' noses in the morning. <laughs> if, you're, if you're dark and nefarious and just plain mean. Um, deny the orphans their nose gold. So, uh, yeah, so this stuff, um, this guy was made with, uh, the foam clay I was showing over there, which is this brand of foam clay, Cal Palmy foam clay. I just, I got it off of Amazon. So let's, let's take a look at what this does. Um, and this is a pretty good amount. I went ahead and bought another one. I mean, I've used quite a bit of this, but just to give you an idea, this is how much I have left after making um, that almost foot tall uh, uh, Hinox in my, the blue creature in my one of my videos, and uh, also um, making a few other things. So, um, yeah, this stuff's pretty cool, and if you if you're careful with it, it can really go a long way. I went ahead and bought another container because I'm working on that Molduga, and that thing is three feet long, and I expect that most of the skin's going to be covered with this. Um, I've considered doing some busts with this and other things. So that's this is the Ziploc bag I added. This is the bag it comes in, and you know this is. This is what it's like. It seems like it, but it's it's stuck really, really tight to that plastic, but it really isn't. You can separate it from the plastic pretty easily. 
and here's where it's kind of so it's very gooey but it's not sticky you notice there's no residue on my hands it's like bubble gum uh, I'd have to say really fresh bubble gum out of somebody's mouth in terms of consistency um, but uh, you can get it pretty smooth pretty fast and if you just leave it there now here's what's kind of cool I have um, if you're curious about how thin you can get this uh, I showed you the little piece I rolled out flat yesterday and I, I cut with a uh, an exacto uh, that's about a I'd say a millimeter and a half to one millimeter thick just under a sixteenth maybe three thirty seconds of an inch if you're a non metric but uh, metric I'd say that's somewhere close to about a millimeter millimeter and a half you can get it thinner than this um, I have rolled this uh, again on that inox and if you look at that video you can see he's got whiskers underneath his chin those are nothing more than this stuff um, I literally rolled these out uh, super super thin um, not quite to a uh, human hair but I'd say around this thick you know um, maybe a millimeter uh, maybe thinner I think a little thinner uh, I let it dry out and then I literally just uh, I keep saying literally but you know it was fairly literally um, took a razor and chop 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 made some little whiskers um, they they held their shape pretty well I mean it at a smaller scale they're not quite as bendy you can get this stuff pretty stiff it does have a lot of flexibility it's just the weirdest material ever um, but you can get it to go very stiff now what's helping this bounce back is that it actually has some of a piece of EVA in the middle of it there's a little piece of this inside there um, however uh, you'll notice this isn't breaking either I'm putting a, a pretty considerable amount of pressure on it and it's not separating um, now if you give this long enough see it's kind of deforming a little bit um, like I was saying earlier it's probably not entirely dry inside it there's probably a nice dry skin on this of about maybe again one to two millimeters um, it only dried nine hours you really want this to dry 24 to 48 hours before it's completely dried down to the center so something like this I mean it, if it, as thick as this um, you could let it dry almost two days cut it open and it might still have a tiny gooey blob in the center that's still not completely dried out so keep that in mind if you're going to be making something thick with it um, yeah you could build a fridge mech um, I, if I were going to build a mech I'd use EVA uh, you could use a Barg's glue for that you guys are probably familiar with it. it usually comes in a can or in a red tube this is their odorless one or I guess low odor one um, but this Barg's all-purpose uh, cement is what you want to use with this you can use super glue um, that tends to work uh, this stuff is amazing though once you put a little tack on there and it doesn't take long to dry I can demonstrate that here in a second but really want to use this stuff for for foam I know it sounds old school and very messy but there really isn't anything better for it um, if you're in a hurry and just want to fill in some some small items and tight gaps um, you can use uh, super glue but this stuff is the best um, if I wanted to shape a finger I could do that pretty easily uh, I guess there is also a level of talent that's involved if you if you're not really good with anatomy or sculpting um, something like that could take a little while 
but uh, yeah you can make all kinds of cool shapes with this stuff and it, you'll notice right here if I can get get it in focus let's see right right there oops There we go. So if I press hard, you can almost make out my fingerprints. See right there? Around the edges. Um, so it will take texture. That it the the problem is it's not that it's not taking texture, it takes texture fine when it's not dry. Um so you can see more fingerprints there also the problem is and this could be a good thing you can smooth that out just moisten it a little bit boom gone smooth as butter um, the problem with the texture is if there's texture you want it to keep and I mean really keep uh, I could put this line in it and by morning uh, this line will almost be completely gone. You'll see something like, uh, not even that, I would say. This thick, deep indention will look like this by morning. Because as this thing is, is uh, losing its moisture and drying out, the foam is actually expanding. I guess the way, if you could describe the way this thing is composed, is the moisture is filling these tiny holes or pockets uh, in the foam and and this is just my theory I'm fairly certain this is how it works though uh, as that moisture releases those those pockets kind of expand with air and dry out and as they harden or start to harden um, it just leaves this thing uh, very much like the consistency of this um, it's, it's gonna have the same kind of porous feel uh, you'll notice there's all these tiny little air pockets in this. I mean, that's why this has a little bit of flexibility and it's so light. It's not just one solid thing. It's it's basically if you took this and hydrated it to a point where this became a mushy, gooey blob. That's what this is. Um, and I believe up to a point you can still wet it and get it to... Uh, deteriorate you have to be really careful though because if you put too much water on this while it's still in its workable form um, it'll just turn into a sludge uh, and you won't be able to do anything with it um, but as far as taking texture yeah I, I've tried sponges foams fabrics uh, if it's not really deep texture uh, it, it won't hold all the way till the drying uh, is completed so just keep that in mind um, if it's more fine detail, what I would say is you can put some lines down that will very lightly show up and then, you know, once it's dry and then once it is dry, go back over it, make a little sausage roll like this. Like say, if you want to put more wrinkles on this finger, I would probably just get this little sausage roll and sculpt it right back into it which I can I mean if I wanted to let's say make a, like say I don't like the way this this gap right here this sort of divot in the finger is I can just do this I'll just use some spittle There you go. By tomorrow, this will look completely smoothed out.
and I can still, if I'm careful, kind of careful, maybe even remove it. Well, maybe not. This one probably rolled a little too thin, but yeah, you can keep removing this stuff up to a point, smoothing it out. That piece I put on just disappeared. You can tell it's there because it's a slightly different color. But I just moved that little ball about that size into this finger. Maybe a little even bigger, I think it was. Was it something like maybe closer to that? So, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, it takes paint pretty well. Um, like I've mentioned, probably in some chats that we've had um, you know either on silvers or Andes uh, if you're gonna paint this stuff or you want it to last um, I would highly recommend uh, coating it with something uh, Cosflex is the one I'm using but there's other ones I think there's a uh, cosplay seal or some sort of thing you can look up foam clay seal and there's all kinds of stuff you can get, but basically what it amounts to is kind of like a Mod Podge, only Mod Podge dries hard. You don't want to put Mod Podge on this unless you want it to be rock hard. But the, uh, the seal paint stuff basically keeps it from drying out. If this dries out, like let's say I want to do like some teeth. And, you know, I do some sharp things like on a vampire. Maybe something like that. All right, that'll be cool, and it'll be nice and bendy, but if you let this dry long enough, probably within a few days to a week, you'll be able to come over here and tr you'll try to bend it like you were, like I'm doing with this right now, and you'll do this, and it will literally break um, pretty easily. Uh, so you don't want that to happen. Um, that just happens because it, it sort of dries out, so you want to seal it uh, with that base coat of whatever you decide to use and uh, like I said the one I use is cause COS flex um, once you've sealed it with that it'll keep it nice and uh, spongy um, it won't it won't uh, dry out to the point it'll fall apart it keeps it very rigid very strong um, like I said that Hinox I, I sculpted uh, that's I'm not I don't have that on a shelf I gave that to my six-year-old nephew uh, he's beating the hell out of it every single day, uh, throwing it across the room, using it to hit things with, with its, you know, monster hands. Uh, so and it gets, it gets toys piled on top of it and it's still in one piece. Nothing's broken off. Still has all its ears. It has its mouth, teeth, tongues, whiskers, everything. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Uh, Definitely give it a try. Uh, I want to say this cost about oh how much how big is it? 500 grams? I would say cost about maybe 20 bucks. But I, I'm not kidding you. A, a little goes a long way with this stuff. Yes, you can make an entire uh, toy with it. Um, that's one solid ball like a baseball. What I would recommend is get something like this and I've seen people do this with super sculpey uh, and a steel ball but if you want something that's curved uh, I would get uh, the foam clay wrap it around especially if it's something that's gonna have some bulk to it get something you can wrap it around let it dry overnight and if you're very careful you can just peel it off and glue the two halves together um, you can do that by putting a blob of this in between the two halves uh, what I would recommend is using this stuff. Uh, let me show you how that works real quick so you can see that. If you've never used it before, this is this will be interesting. So, uh, just looks like that. You just put a little blob there. And you don't need a lot. You don't want to overdo it. You just rub a little bit on both pieces. You can tell it's coating 
all the way across because it's got a nice sheen across all the edges so in other words this is dry this is wet right wet dry and then you look at this one and these should both be wet if I can get it in focus come on there we go so these are both wet and what you do you wait for it to actually not be very tacky if it's still tacky give it another minute I know that sounds counterintuitive I was skeptical too um, but uh, it doesn't take long it only takes a few seconds you can I usually wiggle them around like this to let them dry <laughs> all right not very tacky now if it if it's sticking to your finger and it pops off pretty easily it's probably pretty good so let's see that's it these are now permanently attached to each other um, I probably should have left it a little bit longer but I'm pretty sure this is this is on pretty tight so yeah that's it they're dry oops not really that one's not eh. but yeah I probably should have left it longer so what you want to do is 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 um, once this is completely dry that is uh, this will be impossible to rip apart you you will probably have to tear the foam before you get them apart again so yeah you put a little dab of this on one side put a little dab on the other side that you want to attach it to let them dry out I'd say about a minute um, this is probably pretty close to dry but um, it will make a really strong seal uh, between those two pieces pulling actually pretty hard on this now cool right all right all right I don't know how many of you guys just jumped on I've only been on about uh, oh I've been on a while now actually an hour and 27 minutes so um, I guess this is the part where I answer any questions you got let me I you know I haven't read I'm, I'm new to this so give me a give me a second I'm not an expert like uh, silver and Andy here let me see uh, got the magnet feet to attach to my mech works great legs are still stiff but moving I'd like to see the magnet feet uh, story in heavy metal magazine about a kid who starts a to weep gold okay <laughs> hey let's see All right. Well, I guess uh, anybody got any questions about anything? Uh, either the foam clay or the uh, sculpture or the drawing. Anything you want to add? Otherwise, <laughs> I think I'm going to wrap this up. Probably. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught all of it. Um, for those of you that didn't, I'll be happy to recap. So, I'll be doing more uh, weird sketches in this book. Like uh, this creature here. I might expand on this one a little bit. Um, talk about the... Uh, 
the elves I mentioned earlier. Uh, add uh, some nicer drawings in here. I mean, these are, I know these are quickie sketches. They were just off the top of my head, but you know, I think they were good enough for what, what it is. Um, let me see. Where do you get the foam clay? Um, I bought mine off of uh, Amazon. Uh, I want to see the drawing, please. A drawing. Which one? This one here? Uh, yeah, the temperatures? No, I mean... I think it probably dries a little slower uh, if it's too uh, uh, damp outside, uh, but I really haven't noticed a significant difference um, between, you know, summertime and wintertime. Uh, I, I can tell you, as far as the workability goes, it's not like clay at all. It's literally like working with bubble gum. So... If you want to uh, work with the foam clay, temperature is not really an issue. I certainly wouldn't bake it. <laughs> It'll melt. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that uh, if you uh, just keep it in a cool, dry place and you work with it in a cool, dry place, it'll probably be fine. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't put it anywhere that's so hot it would melt which would be I mean it'd have to be hundreds of degrees I imagine um, I've, I haven't noticed any difference in the, the drying time either I mean it you, 24 hours um, the thinner it is the thinner the coat is the the quicker it dries uh, the finger I showed you that that's only been drying for about nine hours and it already had about a millimeter to two millimeters thickness worth uh, of completely dry foam um, what I was pointing out in, with the piece that I showed earlier is that um, this um, was dry to the touch, but when I cut it open, it was still gooey, um, which looks like this part part is dried out. But let me see. Yeah, look, there's still there's still some gooey bits in here. So, but the skin of it. This, the outside edge of it was dry. This is, I just made a little sausage roll last night. Um, the thin piece that I cut out, this one, this is completely dry by morning um, in only eight to nine hours. You know, and it's still got a lot of that flexibility and malleability. Uh, Andy um, had used some uh, EVA foam. Uh, Andy, if you're watching, um, the EVA foam is great, but this stuff, you basically make your own EVA foam. Um, you can roll it out and then stamp it with something um, to whatever thickness you want. But And then cut it, shape it, whatever. Um, yeah, there's the picture to see. We're looking for a scratch. Um, the other pictures I was showing you was uh, was this one with the uh, the elf. So the reason that this is this ties into the worms is the elves provide uh, themselves they they hire themselves out as uh, guides through the wetlands, and what the uh, writer of this book, who's a traveling merchant, found out was that these elves who tattoo themselves also tattoo their hands and their fingertips and whatever it is they use the barrier or whatever they use for the tattoo for their fingers and, and skin those worms are repelled by so the two ways you can keep the worms from eating your fingers are one um, always wash your hands that helps uh, or wear gloves you know don't let them get to your fingers and two 
uh, get your tat your your finger tattoos because these tattoos, if the worms come in contact with whatever that is, they're repulsed by it. Um, maybe you could even kill them with it if if they tried to eat your finger anyway. But uh, yeah, so the elves already have kind of like they know all about all the monsters and creatures in their area. Uh, they have their own uh, home remedies that keep them from having to worry about it. And uh, yeah, they, they don't worry about the finger worms uh, like dumb humans do who uh, wipe their butts with their hands because um, the worms are attracted to something stinky. Doesn't have to be a hygiene thing either. If you're somebody who uh, likes to eat lots of stinky cheese, like Limburger, for instance, you can expect that you'll be missing a finger in the morning. Or at least you won't know you're missing a finger until it's too late and it's been replaced by that worm. Um, the other thing I was pointing out with the worms, and I'll, I'll draw it here. Um, it's a little bit macabre. But... Uh, the worm stays on you till either you die uh, or it gets removed. Um, and the, uh, the way it will die is when you finally pass away um, and your, you, your, your corpse is no longer providing blood to it, the worm reacts by desiccating and shooting all its uh, spawn into the bloodstream of the dead person, uh, its eggs. Uh, into the person while they're uh, they're dead and the corpse will hatch all of the uh, little baby worms that will come out and go looking for more fingers to eat. Um, I imagine if you slept on your side and your nose was at the ground close enough, maybe a worm would try to eat your nose. I have no idea. So, yeah. Um, let me see. Any other questions about the, let's see, foam clay? Uh, or the or the drawings. Uh, let's see. Here. Don't don't look like it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the um, video I did before this. Uh, I thought it'd be funny to do a, a voice. Um, I don't think that voice is really appropriate for this this character. Maybe as an old man. I kind of imagine him being more of a, uh, a wily salesman kind of guy, uh, something along the lines of, uh, um, I don't know who's that actor. There's a New Zealand actor that's really funny, and a few British actors that I think are hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I don't think any of us are sculptors. Uh, well, you don't have to be a sculptor um, to, uh, to use that foam clay stuff. I mean, it's, it's cool for all kinds of things. Um, I mean, if you just want to make a funky looking plant uh, for a, uh, or mushroom, tiny mushrooms, like, you know, for certain things, it's air dry. You don't have to bake it. It takes paint really well. Um, I wish I had uh, some paint here. I might be able to show you something. All right, so this is the creature I made with foam clay uh, uh, last October. So here he's just kind of, I'm building up his, those holes. I punctured those holes and then injected them later, um, uh, just a little bit before it dried with uh, some whiskers. And you can, you can see that it takes a, a kind of a leathery texture there for the vest. Uh, you can build up muscle tone with it pretty well. There we go. There's some, uh, there's the whiskers I was telling you about. Those are still on there. I mean, at October of last year, those whiskers are still on there. Um, another good example of the paint, look at his fingernails. Or the eye. Uh... So here you go. Uh, and I sprayed him with something to kind of make sure the paint didn't come off. Um, I think hairnet, just regular hairnet. 
But yeah, you can get pretty good detail on this. Um, there we go. Uh, everything on that picture is made of foam. The teeth, the tongue, the hair, uh, the lips, the eyes, everything in that image. It's the only thing that's not made of foam is probably the... Uh, um, Ron Moody and Oliver. Um, is he the guy in uh, the new HBO series, Our Flag Means Death? He has a very he has a very light voice. He talks like this, and he, I, I can't even duplicate it. But uh, um, uh, what was the uh, uh, what we do in the shadows? He was he was a, one of the vampires. Uh, there's uh, that Jim Carrey film called Yes Man, where he plays his uh, his sort of manager, and <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Anyway, he's into like cosplay parties and stuff. It's really weird. Uh, I am you need to see piece I did yesterday yeah I think it'd be good for stuff that needs to be flexible um, anything organic uh, but uh, like I said it will glue pretty well um, if I wanted to say uh, take something like this and, and coat it with something to add more detail um, or get some more texture out of it. I mean, you know, there's things you can do. Um, by the way, I was thinking of making this a little World War II airplane, just as a side note, uh, a little fat, super fat, like a P-38 Lightning with a very tiny tail or something on it. I haven't decided yet. Maybe this will be a, a couple of fighter bombers, um, machine guns coming out the nose. This is the Oreos I bought the other day. I love these little holes that are already like in it. Who knows? We'll see what I do. I mean, that, that makes for really easy uh, reference points for like landing gear or fins or machine guns. Well, then it's definitely not Ron Moody. <laughs> okay. You hate the holes. Uh, looks like they'd be pretty easy to cover up. What I would probably do is just take a piece of plastic card or even just some green stuff and just smear it in there. And then uh, wait for that to dry off. And then once, once you get it dry, just put some uh, plastic over that and sand it down smooth. You probably won't even need to sand it. It'd be just invisible I'd rather have these pre-drilled than have to drill them if I want them because they're easy enough to fill out um, I don't know if you've ever had to drill into a curved object straight like that um, but yeah it's freaking hard uh, to get right the measurements have to be just right uh, it's a pain it's a colossal pain fixing the hole pff, could fix that in about five minutes don't know how kids are going to survive adulthood too protected <laughs> uh, I filled the holes with milliput yeah milliput works all right well I guess that's it uh, unless anybody's got any other specific questions um, uh, anybody want this finger you know, I'll paint it up and mail it to you, or I can paint, mail it to you unpainted. Any takers? Who wants a finger? <laughs> I can always make more. Oh, incidentally, this literally took me, literally, it literally, it literally took me uh, <laughs> five, ten minutes to make this. Um, there's nothing special about it at all. Uh, I guarantee you, if you paint this right and put it on the counter, someone will think it's a real finger. Especially if they try to pick it up and they feel how light it is and that it's kind of squishy like real flesh. Yeah, it will freak them out. I know because my brother used to make severed fingers all the time and uh, I used to help him. But <laughs> um, 
Anybody else? Give Silver the finger. Okay. <laughs> hey, Silver. Hey. Hey. Or if you're British. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, that was rude. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, yeah, Silver, just e email me your uh, address and I'll, I'll ship this to you in an envelope. I'm sure it'll be fine. I trust the USPS. Uh, sort of. So, um, yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess whenever uh, you send me your email address, uh, Silver... Uh, or not email, your uh, snail mail address, I'll, uh, I'll stick this in a... Uh, in an envelope and you you can uh, paint it and tell the cops someone's someone's kidnapped your wife or something <laughs> like, uh, this is all they sent me <laughs> i don't know what you would do with a severed finger i'm sure you'll find a wonderful use for it all right so that was our first giveaway of the of the youtube channel <laughs> a severed finger um <laughs> look at this thing this is crazy uh, all right, man. Well, thanks. Uh, appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and close off the stream here. Uh, anybody uh, else got any questions before I let you go? I could do this literally all day, but uh, I think I have things to do too, um, like sleep. <laughs> I don't know. I might build my uh, my March junk bot tonight. Uh, actually, I had... Um, something specific I wanted to use for that. I was going to ask you guys. Now I can't find it. Let me see. Where did it go? Hmm. It's a... Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen one. It's a palm pomegranate fruit bottle. Um, kind of bulbous shape, like two bulbs on either end. Anyway, I'll, I'll figure it out. All right, thanks, folks. We'll see you later. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, I don't know who else is streaming after this. Um, we'll talk later. Bye.